It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with BP and Ken. All right, guys, welcome into another week of the Border War. I'm the Tan Man. I am joined here to my left by BG. We want to thank everyone for tuning in to last week's shows. I want to remind you to make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Border War, uh, at BG underscore Border War, and I am at Tan Man 3264. BG, it's great to be back in the studio, back on air, talking to our legions of fans about the world of sport it feels like we're getting through the part of the summer where not a lot is going on you get closer business is picking up closer to football for you closer to football which gets you to basketball i was gonna say i I actually (laughs) watched these it's really not that far from basketball season i mean now if you really get into the summer league it's almost like basketball goes um, like almost year round. And if you are even a casual basketball fan and you're not a big baseball fan, and, and I'll admit it, I'm not a big baseball fan. I watch the Braves play. The Braves almost always play at 7 p.m. Um, 7 or 5. One, oh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, there's probably summer league games on. There's a lot of fun to watch. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun to watch. All right, well, BG, we're going to start off in the uh, college world. <laughs> uh I did not bring you in on this because I wanted this to be a nice surprise for you, but uh, we're going to start off the... uh, They're going to finally award my degree after all these years? No. Oh, that's not the surprise? No. Oh. No. (laughs) No. The uh, ESPN put out a list of of the colleges that produced the most draft picks... In all kinds of sports, and you, I you, just saw number yeah, one. You, you, sh- you talk about this, you know. Oh, we do very well in uh, equestrian. Number five on when this list. When have you ever heard me say that? You say that a lot. Number uh, five on the list: Notre Dame. Number four: Kentucky. Three is Duke. Number two. This one's a little bit of a shocker. Maryland. That is a big shocker. But the top. I wonder pro- who it could the be. The top professional athlete producing school. In the country is, drum roll, the North Carolina Tar Heels, BG. In all seriousness, though, okay, so men's basketball, men's lacrosse, and soccer. And soccer those are their, okay, so but yeah, yeah, so you guys have a lot of major league soccer players, I'm assuming that's soccer, what that means. Lacrosse, but yeah, you is look, there a professional lacrosse yes, in like, the United States? Yes. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of the big football programs... You know, you see Florida at eight, Oklahoma at, you know, they're further down. But the, and I mean, the these, funny these thing top, is... These top four are basically nobodies in football, which is shocking. Well, that's what I was going to say, because, I mean, okay, and, and I'm, let me let me take all the humor out of this. I'm not in all uh-huh. trying to be ironic here, but, like, obviously you guys put guys in the NBA, but there are very few teams, very few players on each team. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. there's just not the potential... But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I would say, I don't know this, I would say that South Carolina has more guys in the NFL right now than you have in the NBA. Wouldn't you think? Well, see, I don't think this list... I think we have 31 or 32 guys in the NFL right now. Well, see, I don't think that this list takes into account necessarily players, I think it's draft picks. Okay. Producing a draft. So if, you know, yeah, that's signs, true because a lot of our guys are signed on free agents at the end. Yeah. Okay. So I, I wanted to take a minute and toot our horn because we're going to get into some uh, bowl projections here that have come out in the last <laughs> week needed, or so. You needed your horn to uh, read that. You know, the, the Tar Heels are scarce in a lot of them. Where do you want to start at, BG? Well, I mean, we can talk um, either one of those two articles that right. we looked at um, as far as bowl projections. I right. hey, so, in North Carolina is just not on there. Yeah, which, right? which is, and, and I don't. Which is shocking. I think it's Athlon and was it collegefootballnews dot com. You know, with North with Carolina's not even Myrtle on there. Beach is getting a bowl now. I mean, come on. If you don't think North Carolina is going to bounce back and go at least six and six, I just you're you're not paying attention. You being whoever wrote these things, that they're not paying attention to how weak that side of the ACC is. I mean, look, North Carolina is not a great football team, but but I do think you have a good coach. You have good talent coming in at quarterback. Just adding a mobile quarterback is going to change everything. I think 
I mean, I don't want to blow it early. I can still reserve my right to change my opinion, but I haven't looked at North Carolina's schedule yet. We'll do that in about a month probably. But penciling them in, I think about seven and five. Yeah, Am I yeah. crazy? No. I mean, like, I, that's obviously a bowl team. The, uh, obviously. We'll, we'll, look, we'll, tell, we'll just take Athlon. Athlon here, I think this is the most recent one. Uh, the college football playoff, the four teams this got, it's got Clemson in uh, against Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State. Any, any well, shock there? A couple I, of weeks ago, I think my final four. And it's got Alabama final, and Clemson for a national title. Right. I, I disagree with that. Um, I, I think that uh, I believe my final four was Alabama at one, Clemson at two, um, Ohio State at three, and I think I had Auburn in at four. Auburn, I think. Because I think Auburn is going to beat Washington in that first week, and I think Washington will lose one more game. I think the only game I, Auburn probably loses is to Alabama, which will not. And obviously because they're in the same side of the SEC, they don't play each other in Atlanta, so they don't get that double jeopardy thing. Right. Georgia uh, is going to lose two games. I, I don't know to who. But I think they're going to lose two games. One of them will probably be to Alabama. All right, this one has got your New Year's Six Bowls. Uh, Miami and Penn State in the Peach Bowl. Boise State and Wisconsin in the Fiesta. Michigan and Washington in the Rose. I don't think Oklahoma's and Oklahoma that good this Oklahoma and year. Auburn in the Sugar. I, no, I, I don't think Michigan's that good. They, I, I, I don't believe Michigan will be in the Rose Bowl. I, I haven't heard what the Oklahoma quarterback is going to do. This isn't the one that had Mississippi State playing on New Year's Day, is it? Yes, it is. It it's, is. Got, it's got Michigan State, Mississippi State, I don't, Citrus. Do you see Mississippi State basically getting told in no uncertain terms, you're not even good enough to keep your coach? Like, you, you are a second-class program, yeah. even if they're not. And their players bouncing back in that kind of way and playing on January the 1st against Michigan State, I don't see it. It's a, not in that division. I mean, it's it, it, yeah, it might be... One of the best divisions in football. I, they could they, go eight high. and four. I've seen and people be that are really high on Mississippi State. They're saying they've got the best quarterback running back combo in the country. I, I don't. I think you're reading too much into the Dan Mullen thing. Oh, I if am. If it wasn't Florida, Dan Mullen would still be there. I mean, I don't think he was leaving Mississippi State to go to Vanderbilt or to Mill or anything like yeah. that. I mean, it was just most that, of that the wasn't time, the job. I think he's going to regret having done it too, but that's probably another another show, another day. All right, maybe. All right, let's see. Just scrolling through, trying to find some interesting Arizona and Louisville. Eh. Scrolling through, scrolling through. There we are. Here we go. We got Florida State, this Texas is... in the Camping World Bowl. Eh. Nobody knows does. what to think about Nobody Texas right the... now. Everybody thought Mark, you know, that Herman was going to turn it around last season I I said he wouldn't because it was just year one um, I can see them having a nine win season though South Carolina and Maryland in the Music City Bowl Does well that sound right I think that sounds a little low I think I think that if if we're in the Music City Bowl, it means you probably that, that gone seven and five. That, that we lost every toss up game and at least one, maybe two games that we were favored in. Um, I don't see South Carolina losing five football games this year, not at all. I don't even think it's close to that. If you wind up in the in the Music City Bowl, are you disappointed? Oh, absolutely. I right, well, we'll go over to the collegefootballnews.com dot com one. This one is is. Got you guys a little bit better. This got you in the Citrus Bowl. That's significantly better against Penn State. That's about right. So that means you probably that's won ten and two. Yeah, I was gonna say nine games, maybe ten games. That's a ten and two season, more than likely. Um, meaning you lost to Clemson and you lost either to Texas A and M or Georgia, but not both. Yeah, just scrolling through. Nowhere in here. I just don't get that. Is North Carolina? Let me scroll over and find. They don't have, yeah, they don't have you in a bowl game at all, and I just think let's, that's absurd. As I said, let's see who they think the playoff teams are. Too many of these guys seem to think last season is still this season, and they've, they've made that mistake with us. Um, and to be honest, I think they're making it a little bit with Clemson right now. Oh, I've seen, I've seen uh, Trevor Lawrence has got odds for the Heisman Trophy already, which is just. Insane. I mean, and all that means is that people that they think people will bet on it. It doesn't mean they think it's likely or they, it's the same reason you can get the Lakers at seven to two for the NBA title right now. Right. But uh, 
All right, this one has got Alabama. This one's got Washington back in the playoff. Alabama, Washington, well, and then Clemson, Ohio State. Right, which is three of the, the literally the only game they disagree right. with me on is that kickoff classic in Atlanta. So you're telling me if you're you think about it now, you put yourself in this guy's shoe. You're really telling me that Washington in the first game of the season comes into the Mercedes Benz Outer Space Space Simulator Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, and knocks off Auburn. Nah, I don't see it. I, let me come back. And to all you. I'm saying is, if you lose that game, all I'm saying is that, that Washington loses one more. It's the same thing I'm saying with Georgia. No, no, Pac-12, Pac-12 teams, West Coast teams are already behind the eight ball. I mean, they almost can't lose. Right. To get and, in. And it's the same thing I'm saying with Georgia, though, who's not behind the eight ball. But Georgia, you know, they, they go to the national title game last year um, for the first time since 1980. Okay? I, that doesn't mean you're going to be there every year. Okay? And, and if Georgia loses two games... They're probably not going to make it in. Look, when we started the whole college football playoff thing, it was it was you know it was sold as this opens it up to you know this opens it up to everybody. Everybody's got a chance. It has locked it down, man. What do you think the the impression of this thing is going to be if we go another year or another couple years where you are just basically cycling through? For these four spots, the six same teams. six teams, six teams over and over again. I mean, I think the shine to me, as a fan, and you know, to me the shine of it is already starting to wear off a little bit. And you go another couple of years where all you're getting is Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia, some mix of these same five or six teams. Every I year. almost I'm gonna don't be like, think. Eh, okay, I almost don't think there's anything I can say about this that will sound unbiased, no matter how hard I try, because. When two of those six teams are Georgia and Clemson, as a South Carolina fan, yeah, I don't like that too much. Well, I'm not talking about just as I'm talking about just as a yeah. Fan but what in I'm general. saying is, your listener hears me say this stuff and thinks, "Well, he's a Gamecock." So that's, I mean, and that's not where I'm coming at it from. But it's the same thing we've talked about in the NBA, isn't it? Isn't that the exact same issue you've heard me harp on? We can't keep having these two teams play each other over and over and over. It's too predictable. Boy, that's the only thing the NFL has going for it right now. With all the negative press and all the flag crap and all the, you know, spousal abuse and whatever else is going on in the NBA, as big as a dumpster fire as it is, the reason it remains competitive it's is because every, everybody every can year, be competitive. Son, every year at this time of year, a fan of whoever you are. And, and, and six or seven thinking, of those teams are not delusional. Well, they I, sound delusional right now. Well, we thought the Jacksonville Jaguar fans at this time last year that said, I think we're going to have a really right. good team. I, I yeah. mean, sit down and us. Yes. And they should have been in the Super Bowl. Well, we talked about it, was it two two weeks ago? We, we picked what we thought the six teams would be who make it into the playoffs, who didn't make it last year, because that on average is how many a year flip? Half of them. Yeah. yeah. Half. Uh, ESPN you don't see that in college football. No, no, you don't. You're, just, you're literally been just cycling clip. through the same teams over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, yeah. I, I mean, and you don't see it in college basketball for everything that. I mean, yes, North Carolina, Duke, Kentucky, those guys are okay, always but, around. But Loyola, Chicago was in the Final Four this year. Butler shows up. I mean, South Carolina shows up. Okay, right. you don't see that at least early on in college football. The first four years of this playoff, you haven't seen that. ESPN put out an article. I guess it was about a week ago, uh, going through each team in the league and discussing who, uh, if those teams had playoff aspirations, who was going to be the most critical. BG, what do you want to do? We'll start the Panthers. Yeah, let's start, let's with, start the with the Panthers. I don't know if these are in any order. We'll pretend they are. Who's the number one? You think? Uh, I, I would assume Cam Newton. And, I mean, I don't think that's you know really yeah it, going out on a limb. No, no shocker there. It's got Cam. It's got Luke Keekley. McCaffrey, uh, Torrey Smith, and Dante Jackson. And it basically says whoever plays the opposite cornerback from bad, from uh, James Bradbury. Could be Cockrell, could be Captain Munnerlin. Uh, but uh, anything jump out at you? By, uh, to me, this is pretty, you know, pretty standard. They're going to go as far as Cam can take them. Uh, the the Tory Smith one, I, I don't know that Tory Smith is going to be the main the main wide receiver weapon in Carolina. I, I think 
I the, think the, the main guy I have in mind that I want to watch this year is 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 DJ Moore. And that's what I was going to say. I because think DJ Moore will wind up just, taking that spot. I started to say, you know, that they've got guys, quote unquote, who have established themselves, right? Mm-hmm. But we all know that if if you look at the Panthers roster minus DJ Moore, they don't have a number one wide receiver. No, it's a tight end. It, it's, it's, oh, it's yes. Olsen. Yes. It, it's always been Greg Olson. Uh, we know Christian McCaffrey isn't going to be a durable, over-the-middle wide receiver. Yes, he's a weapon, but he I think he's a guy that has to come out of the slot. He's got to have other talent around him. Um, and, I mean, you and I, he we're both not catch- sold on Devin Funches. I just 80 don't- catches last year. Oh, yeah. McCaffrey had 80 catches. Yeah. No, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, but they need that guy on the outside against the other team's best cornerback that they traded. <laughs> mm. Okay. They've got to replace Kelvin Benjamin. And Devin Funches is not Kelvin Benjamin. And don't get me wrong, I know you can't stand Funches. I think Funches can be a good number two wide receiver. He can be the guy that gets you that first down. But he is not going to flip the field. DJ Moore can do that. And and I think he, if, if I'm going non-standard answer, I know it sounds crook, crazy, I'm actually uh, I'm going to mention rookies for for the Cowboys and the Redskins too as being key players because I think in today's NFL that's where we are. There's no depth. I mean, rookies have to come in and play, yeah. right? Okay, so I think this kid coming out and giving Cam a legitimate offensive weapon outside of an aging Greg Olson is a big deal. Yeah, I do. I do. Hey, yeah, he's got to stay upright. First and foremost, well, I mean, he, yeah, he, he's and again, gotta, that's all. That's all assumed. I mean, that's why I didn't say any of that. I just think yeah. when you sound like it's kind of like when we did our final four predictions. I mean, you made fun of me. Well, what do you want me to do? Oregon State, Arkansas makes it to the college football final four. No, yeah. I'm not. No, yes, that's no. what we're gonna do. <laughs> no, that's how you wind up. Uh, that's how we wound up with Oklahoma City and uh, the Washington Wizards in the NBA finals in our predictions. But that. <laughs> That didn't happen. No, no. <laughs> we'll save the worst for last. We'll go ahead and hit the oh. Cowboys now. Uh, this one oh, is, I see. yeah. This one uh, again. This one is pretty obvious. It's got uh, Tyron Smith, Elliott, Sean Lee, Dak Prescott, Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, to me, the two that jump out on this list is Lawrence and Sean Lee. Obviously, we know Prescott has got to improve. I think he took a step back from his rookie year, but they had a lot of things against him. Demarcus Lawrence had three sacks his first three seasons with injuries, a suspension. He comes out with 14 and a half. Okay. There's like a big, huge, I mean, okay, if he's not going to get 15, we need him to get somewhere around 9 or 10. I mean, it's not about sacks, it's about pressure. Well, and that, that was all part of it. He had, it says he had 52 pressures last year. That's what you want to So that's what I'm saying, you know. There has to be some happy medium with Demarcus Lawrence at, at the bare minimum on that. And the other, Sean Lee, this says they allowed uh, about 89 yards a game when he's in there on the ground. When he was out, that jumped up to 136. That's massive. That is a massive, huge gap. Now, I know they drafted uh, Vander Esch at a Boise State. Yes. He walks like a, yeah, he walks like Lee. He, talks, he looks like Sean Lee. Maybe he's Lee's heir apparent. If, if he can't stay healthy, to me, is more more of an insurance. Kid's not going to have Lee. that kind of impact this year. No, but a rookie yeah. linebacker is not going to read offenses quick enough yeah. to make that kind of a difference. It notes since 2015, the Cowboys are one in seven without Sean Lee, which is shocking. That since 2015, they've only played eight games without Sean Lee because it feels like he misses like nine games a year. It really does. It does. That's just yeah. Amazing. All right. Let let me throw uh, uh, the 800-pound gorilla in the room out there, and then I want to mention one more player. Mm-hmm. How about Ezekiel Elliott? I mean, do you think he matters to the Cowboys? Because he didn't play in like seven games last year, and you guys weren't any good. Well. I mean, you, do you think I mean, do you I, think that part of Dak Prescott's problem last year might have been the absolute lack of a consistent running game he could depend on? Do you, do you think maybe that mattered? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little. The, the running game, it took a, it took a bump when Elliott was out. It didn't fall off the cliff like I was worried it might. Right. But clearly, when Elliott is in there, 
it, they're a better football team. But more important than that, I, it, it, between the two, between Elliott and Tyron, I don't know that Tyron Smith isn't bigger because when he was out last year, Prescott got hammered. That it, that Atlanta game just Dak Prescott didn't do anything all day long, but pick himself up off the ground. True enough. I mean, he was getting mauled, and so and it, it wouldn't have mattered if Ezekiel Elliott. Was it wouldn't have mattered. You know, Elliott was in there when they played Denver, and they couldn't block Denver, and Elliott had nine yards. So I, I think the offensive line, Tyron Smith, is is uh, between those two, uh, between this whole list, Smith by, might be the most important of those five. That and that's true team. on every football team. Nobody ever talks about it. It's not fun to talk about, but it's always true. Yeah. How about how about this for a really important guy, a guy that hasn't played a down for the Dallas Cowboys yet? You want to guess who I've got in mind? What is your, think about if I'm looking at Dallas's team? Critically, which I do every morning as soon as I get up. It's on my checklist. Look yeah, at, I love it. Look at, I love we live rent free between the years. Oh, there's man. no question. I love we live. The rent-free. Dallas Cowboys definitely live in my head. I will freely admit that. How about Michael Gallup? I think that is an important. I mean, you guys have no one to it's, throw a football to. It is interesting that they. I, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing that. A wide receiver is not mentioned in any in their and, and, little and list. Don't get me wrong; I don't think Michael Gallup has shown me franchise-changing potential, but he has to. There is nobody else. I think he's being asked point blank, "Are you Des Bryant in training camp right now?" <laughs> like literally, I saw a clip of it, and he's like, "Des is a great." He's saying all the right things, but you have to wonder. I mean, like, I think we're going to wind up with like four Cole, guys. Cole Beasley's going to be. Cole Beasley's going to. He's going to. That's have, happening. Cole Beasley's going to have the most catches on the team. We're going to wind up with four guys who have like forty catches. Not you know, you got to find a replacement for Jason Witten. Yeah. I, I yeah, mean, there yeah, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're not going to find a replacement. The for number Jason of Wooden. questions on that skill position, with the skill positions on the offensive side of the ball, to me, far outnumber the amount of spots they have to write this article for the Cowboys. The number of spots. Anyway, th- this is a problem that, I don't know, two thirds of the teams in the league have, right, though? I mean, do you. Football, the NFL, it's violent. You're going to have injuries. You're going to have retirements. You have guys leaving the league quicker than ever now. Mm. Guys are playing five years and leave. Bye. I got my money. I'm done. I'm, I'm, yeah. I want to remember my kid's name when he's 16. Um, so, I mean, this is not unusual. I don't think the Cowboys are in bad shape, but you're right. They do have a lot of questions. I don't think we're in bad shape. I think we're just in kind of an unknown territory. I mean, it might turn out perfectly fine. And, and We're not the what? first... We're not the first team who has gone into a season where the fans didn't know all their skill position and, and, and players. And again, and it's not just because of the two guys sitting in this room, but I'll look, I'll look across the NFL. I, overall, I think the NFC East is the toughest four-team division in, in the NFL right now. Uh, you might be right. I, doubt, I, I definitely think it is. Man, finishing up in the NFC, we'll, we'll go over to Washington for a second, I guess. I think we're contractually obligated to... I just gave you 10 minutes I, of excellent analysis I, on the hated Cowboys. We'll go through. Who's, uh, who's, uh, without looking at the list, who's, who's uh, the top name on the list? Most important Redskin on the team. I, I'm going to say they said Alex Smith. I mean, like, Alex I mean Smith, that's yeah. huge. Um, but i tell you who I'm going to. Same thing I just did with you guys. Darius Geis. Massive. He's on the, he's on the list. Massive. He needs to be a superstar... The first time he touches the football. Like, that is how bad our running game has been. Now, has Chris Thompson had great games? Yes. But I think he weighs 89 pounds. Guys, he is not going to stay healthy. He got a lot of bad pub but coming I tell you out of the what, draft. But everything, once after we've gone away from the draft and he's gotten up there in the facility around the team, I haven't heard anything the but town, how much they love this the guy. The town apparently is crazy for the dude. He's going right. to Nationals games. He's taking pictures, you know, at, at, at Which is Wizards exactly playoffs. what he needed I mean, to like, do. Yes, yes. And exactly he's, what he needed and, to do. And, I mean, and, and, you know, every time you see him, he's got that, that smile that, you know, kind of lights the room up. And are any of those issues from LSU real? Yeah, I, no, probably, probably so. Real. Probably so. But, I mean, but – 
here's hoping. I mean, I'm just saying, like, to me, the NFC East has always been the running back division. And we're the only team that really doesn't have one. Now, you got Barkley, you got Elliott. Uh, you want to see you guys getting Geis and the Giants getting Barkley scares the crap out of me, man. Um, Which is you know all the more reason that Sean Lee has got to stay on the field this year. Uh, no question. I mean, no got question. to. And I mean, watching Geis's film too. I mean, he he's got that sort of. John Riggins feel to him, which is how I judge all running backs. He 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 sort of runs angry. Um, he ends up sort of tackling linebackers rather than around. That's not always the smartest way to go about life in the NFL. But he hasn't played in the NFL yet, so nah. let's not judge that. But and then another name I'm going to throw out there. I'm not looking at your list, obviously. Um, I'm going to say Jordan Reed's on there. He's a, yeah. Because He's next, here's the thing. We talk. We, Jordan Reed has become a joke, right? I mean, it's just a joke now. He's it, hurt. It, well, he's but, a, but we a for, running a running joke on my fantasy football team every but year. But we forget that when he was healthy, he was maybe the second best tight end in the NFL. Well, it is admitted. Uh, and, and, I mean, if you know, he's healthy this season, in twenty it's admitted. Twenty fifteen, they play. He plays fourteen games. You guys make the playoffs. In twenty sixteen, he plays twelve games. Only a two. You know. Basically, pretty close to saying, and they missed out by a game. By a game. Yeah. Yep. Eh, I, other than Gronk, when he's healthy, he might be one of the biggest mismatches in football. He, Yeah, he's he's the new prototype NFL tight end, right? He's got the size of a tight end, but he's got the speed of a, of a second-team wide receiver, I mean, a second-tier wide receiver, um, and he can line up out in space. But, yeah, he's got to stay healthy. That's, and, really, and that's really, really the only you. knock on him. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think this is his last year in Washington, no matter what he does. I do not think he's with the Redskins next year. Is he up Healthy for contract this offseason? Yeah. Yeah, because he's going to want more money than I'd be comfortable. Now, I don't him. think I don't think the Washington they wouldn't Redskins pay, they wouldn't pay Kirk Cousins. Why the heck would they pay if, this guy? I don't think if he if he's healthy all sixteen games, I don't think it takes the taste of the last few seasons. And I'm not suggesting it's in any way his fault. No, I mean if guy gets hurt, he, yeah. I mean if he's hurt, he's hurt. There's nothing you can do, but it's not his fault. But I don't. I just don't see them coming coming back with that. All right. For Alex, I thought this is worth mentioning. Alex Smith, uh, since 2011, there are 69 wins. Only Tom Brady has more wins since then than I. I thought it was worth mentioning. I think Alex Smith, it, given the situation we were in, is the perfect quarterback for right now. Because he does the thing that is the most important in the NFL, and that is not throw touchdowns. That is not throw interceptions. Mm-hmm. That's it. He doesn't throw picks, and that's the one thing you want out of your quarterback. You're missing another name on the list. One of them is you're not going to get. So it has Monte Nicholson listed. Um, Josh Safety. Doxson? No. That's not on the list. That's not, crazy. Not on the list. Because Doxson, to me, long-term is a much bigger deal than Jordan Reed. He was a draft pick. I mean, you, you drafted this guy first round. Um, Jonathan Al. Allen, that's that's the okay. last name. It says it misses. There's a clear how there was a clear drop off oh, no, after no he question. was lost. They allowed 88 yards per game uh, when he played. When he didn't, it was 155. And and I get that. And he is he can be dominant. I'm guessing that's on the ground. It doesn't say it's on the ground. Yeah, because he, he's in in I, and I and I've heard some rumors that the Redskins want to go back to that four down front, but. He's essentially our undersized nose tackle when it comes down to it. But here's the thing. Um, the, the the little misleading part of that stat is it fails to mention the other 10 guys on defense were all hurt when he was too. I mean, like, we didn't have our starting defense after week three. I wish I had, a, I wish I had like, a baby crying button here. I wish I could reach and slap Whatever. that hat off your head. How about that? Whatever. How about that? How about that? <laughs> Excuse me. All right, guys, that is it for the NFL section this week, BG. Cash you outside. Cash me outside. I'm sure uh, in the uh, coming that? weeks we'll be getting back into it. We'll be making some You think football. we'll talk some more football? Yeah, probably. Uh, maybe. So. A little bit. Maybe. Until October, then it's all We're right. a week away from our year anniversary. You're right. We are. We are a week away from our year anniversary. Of the missing show. Of the lost episode. That's what we call it. 
Uh, but that's it for the NFL section. Uh, if you want to, click the link. We'll be talking about some baseball next up. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter. I'm not going through the names because BG gets mad when I do. It's irritating. Well, if you want to follow us on Twitter, we're at the Border War. If you want to follow BG, he's at BG underscore Border War. I think my Twitter handle's full up, actually. I don't think I can have any more followers. Well, yeah. 100,000 is all it'll let you do. I, I think it lets you do more than that. Yeah, mine's, mine's a different kind of account. You're on Twitter? Yes. Twitter. <laughs> I'm Tan Man 3264 We're out. Cash me outside. How about that?